Okay, what's going on? So the, the question was again, what percentage of the vehicles will be domestically produced? What do you mean by the <coughs> amount of content that's in the vehicle? Well, a couple of things. The vehicle is 100% engineered right here in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, all the engineering work, software, integration is done, is done right here. The uh, overall domestic content of this vehicle is about, about 60 to 70 percent is our domestic content. And the vehicle is actually manufactured in, in Hermosillo, Mexico. But the key here is all the engineering, the design, the tooling, development is all done right here in Dearborn, Michigan. Let's talk about the upgrades on the interior, too. Can we take a peek inside, uh, Wes, and uh, get a look at the interior, maybe? I think if, if, we, got the key, if we have the keys and we can turn... Uh, Turn it on. We might be able to. Uh, that's, uh, okay. Tell me about the upgrades on the interior. Well, um, if you, for, with the hybrids, you actually get uh, recycled fabric as a standard. So it's 100% post-industrial recycled fabric. But obviously, you can get all the upgrades. Now we walk off the Fusion SEL in terms of our content. So what are we for the hybrid? For the right. hybrid. Yeah. So what are our standard on the Fusion SEL? is standard on the hybrid. And on top of it, you get the 110 volt outlet, you know, so you can plug in your hair dryer or your, you know, your laptop charger. Um, and you get a six CD, a six disc CD changer. Um, so, you know, it's 17 wheels, it's a wheel, inch wheel is standard on the hybrid. So it's a great package and ambient lighting is standard. And everybody talks about how uh, it seats five adults comfortably. And it has a heck of a, rear seat and it has a heck of a trunk too. Oh absolutely and you know the, the quietness of this vehicle is marvelous. We had so many guidebook editors and motor you know automotive journalists get in the car and give us comments like the level of refinement in this vehicle far exceeds the high-end luxury brands that you pay fifty sixty thousand. You need it to be quieter because of sync is that well, right? Well not just sync I mean the fact that the engine's off for a lot most of the time when you're driving so you have to make sure that the overall vehicle is very quiet so even the fact that we chose this particular tires on this vehicle. These are low rolling resistance, uh, very quiet tires, good for road noise. So the vehicle is very quiet when you drive this car. And it, like I said, it far exceeds the uh, foreign high-end luxury brands you pay $50,000, $60,000 for. Where's the battery, you said? Here's, here's Maggie. What do you have Oh, we have another question. Oh, again, two questions. I had one, now I have two. Uh, what extra maintenance is required uh, with the hybrid? Mm. Um, and also, is there, again, the question about worries when it's very cold outside? Well, I mean, we'll talk, we'll touch on the cold again because we want to uh, have one of our calibers talk about how we test these cars. But with hybrids, because the engine's off most of the time, and you're, like your typical driving cycle and, and city cycle, over 60% of the time the engine's off. So your oil change intervals are up now, moved up to 10,000 miles. So every 10,000 miles, we change the oil. Apart from that, it's all your standard maintenance, you know. And the other thing with hybrids are because most of your region of your braking is actually coming from the powertrain and city driving. You use your friction brake pads very little, so you can extend your brake pad life by a significant amount of time. Well, here's the question that everybody's been asking uh, for the last three or four years since the uh, gas crisis of earlier this year or last year, and since uh, hybrids really hit the mass market. About three thousand dollars more for yeah. a hybrid. Yes, yeah, about three thousand. When is it worth my while to go from a standard vehicle to a hybrid? Well, I mean, you know, here's here's my rationale, right? With for three thousand dollars more than the SCL, the, the level of refinement you're getting from this powertrain far exceeds the luxury brand. So, I think at twenty-seven thousand dollars, you're getting a luxury car in the way I look at it. Plus, it's almost uh, you know 40, 40, 50 fifty percent better fuel mm -hmm. economy than our than our equivalent gas cars. So. It's a win-win outcome when you buy a vehicle like this today. The other thing with hybrids are they hold better residual, residual values when, than gas cars. So when it's time to sell your car, you'll have a much better premium than you would on a gasoline Didn't car. I read that the entire Fusion line has uh, improved resale value? Absolutely, right? yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. And I think I wanted to answer the question about cold weather. Uh, if, uh, Chris, if you want to talk about all our cold weather testing we have done since the questions have come up again. Uh, well, in, in general, we, these uh, vehicles, uh, these Ford vehicles, uh, they, they, they get the same testing uh, regimen that all of our Ford cars do. So that means down to minus 40, up to 120 in the desert, uh, altitude, uh, top of uh, Pikes Peak or Mount Evans, down to uh, uh, Death Valley. In particular, in the cold weather, um, like, like Scott said earlier, we, we are they're engineered to start down to minus 20 Fahrenheit 
without any uh, battery warmer or battery you know, engine block heater, and then also down to minus 40 with that block heater assist. So uh, I, I've spent much, we spent many, many uh, days and weeks in uh, Thompson, Manitoba testing that out, and uh, these are definitely strong performers in the cold weather. Anything you want to add? Extreme uh, Okay, you got it. Okay, I mean, what's, what's the next step? Where do we go next? Uh, big, yeah. You know, let, take the cost out, uh, get the weight down, and uh, higher fuel economy. And More efficiency out of the engine. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, uh, since the 04 Escape that was launched, you know, with uh, the hybrid, every year the team has done a wonderful job in taking more gains in fuel economy, getting more efficiency, right? So I think we'll see more efficiency improvements in the overall powertrain, uh, overall power pack weight and cost reductions. These are things that we're looking for and we're going to work, uh, we continue to work on that. What's your gut? Is it the hybrid? Is that the future? Is it, I see we have a hydrogen experimental, experimental vehicle over here. We've heard about uh, eco-fuels. What is your gut? Where think, is the world going? I think that we believe that there is a, there's a portfolio of products out there that will meet different needs for different customers. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it's hard to say that the trend is towards hybrids or full electrification. For example, with our EcoBoost strategy, you know, you're getting 20% more fuel economy, uh, V8-like performance on a V6 engine. And yet, you know, it's more cost effective for most people that might be the better solution. So it, it's yet to be seen where the market goes, but I think at this stage in the game, we think that there are different portfolio products. And it could be a mix, right? It could be a mix. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Maggie, what do you think? All right, so we have a